morning. Good morning. It is nine or something, and uh, we're back. Uh, Real talk with Devin Will. We trust that you've had a great weekend. Thank you ever so much for dropping in again today. We appreciate all. We appreciate all your support. We appreciate all your uh, all, all, all the all the people who have gone to the YouTube channel and subscribed and liked, and uh, we appreciate all that. We appreciate people who watch here on Facebook every week because we know we, we're learning. Well, some of y'all are admitting it in public. <laughs> That y'all watch every week. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. We do. Um, today, we're going to finish the top 10 ingredients of a successful marriage slash relationship. Uh, because everything, it, it, you know what? Married people like to think everything is about marriage. But, you know, that's, not the, not. that's, not, that's, not, that's not the only relationship that people can have. You know, I mean, it's ridiculous to think that the only relationship you can be in is a marriage relationship. We have all sorts of friend relationship, business relationships. Uh, that make up our lives. So we're going to finish the top 10. Again, in no particular order, we did the top five last week. So you can check out the top five ingredients on YouTube. Go to our YouTube channel. Um, just look for Real Talk with Deb and Will and subscribe and like and share with your friends. Um, just to go, just to give a breakdown of what they were last week. Um, the, it was trust, honesty, respect, communication, and loyalty. Those were the top five on our last week that we covered. And we're going to go back, go to the, the uh, next five? Sec- second half. Yes. The second half, the next, the next five. Because we, we talked about they, they're in really no particular order. They're like ingredients, like in, like in a recipe. Uh, it really doesn't, for the most part, and it doesn't matter how you put them in. They all have to be, but they all have to be there for the soup to taste good. All right. Um, so where are we going to start? Um, number six is happiness. Happiness, um, it's in, in, in a realistic world, it's not possible to be happy all the time. Because I'm happy. <laughs> One of the world's most annoying songs. <laughs> but popular because people want to be happy. People want to be annoyed, I think. <laughs> Can you play some more of that annoying music? That'd be great. I like that song. It, it is. The first, I don't know, 62 times I heard it, I thought, well, that's a clever little song. Never play it again. Um, but this is something that everybody wants to be. They want to be happy. And people always uh, comment and say, you, you know, to us a lot, that, you know, you all look, always look so happy. You always look Behind the closed door. Well, <laughs> no. Happiness, the thing about about happiness being the goal, um, happiness basically depends on what happens. I think that there needs to, I mean, there's there's an underlying joy um, that is the, that, we have. that keeps you going. Yes. Because, you know, you there's can't, a difference. you can't be happy about everything. Oh, listen, on the way home on last Wednesday, my back rear tire exploded about a mile from the house, and I drove my car home going, bah, 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 bah. yeah, I wasn't happy, because <laughs> that would make me kind of crazy. Yeah, Guess what yeah. happened, family? My tire exploded. Isn't that odd? Aw- that would make me crazy. Yay! Yay! Let's go look at it. Yay! Look at it. It's toe up. <laughs> and you ain't got money for it. That's awesome. That would make you crazy. <laughs> you know, my tire when I was like, but, you know, I don't think I was all down about it or no. anything. I was like, mm, it happens. You just deal with it. You just, next. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Mm-hmm. So And that comes a lot of it comes from fifty years of experience doing, you know, you just deal in life. Um, you just deal with it. And you can't let, you know, the the tolls of life just take control of your life. You deal with it and, and a lot of it how you the how you deal with it and it, emotionally uh will depend on how well things go after the the fall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's you know what and 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 that's right. Uh, a lot of it's just being older and 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 living through things and being able to prioritize the disasters that happen in your life. You know what having a blown back tire is frustrating and sort of annoying, but not really on the top 50 <laughs> of things that that are worth really worrying about. Worth, worth really getting upset about it anymore. And I don't think that was that was me 30 years ago or or, or 35 years ago even, but it's certainly me today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> when that tire went out, I was like, hmm, crap. Oh, well, I'll just drive home. 
<laughs> it was dark. I'm just going to go home. Oh, home right up here. I'll just drive there. I got home. I, nothing bad happened. I was safe. And those, and those things were better. So that's the kind of stuff that you kind of learn as you get older. Because otherwise, you just keep, I mean, you, you'll be like, oh, things are great. Now things suck so bad. Oh, things are great. Now things suck so bad. And that, I don't think that's how you want to be personally. I don't think that's how you no. want to be in a relationship. And that's not how God wants you to be. No. Um. So, and, and the thing is, to, you have to find things that make both of you happy. You know, when you are celebrating or doing things together, find things that you have in common that will make both of you happy. And that's how you can continue to the happiness within your relationship. Yeah. And if I can say one more thing. Yes. Um, hey, Tammy. Hey, Don. Um, that when young people are looking to get married, I always hear, Oh, she makes me so happy. Well, first of all, I'll tell you why that's the problem. The problem is, and I know it sounds, I know it sounds crazy, but listen, but, but hear me out, is that what happens the day that they don't make you happy? Yeah. You're going to leave them? The idea is. Some people do. <laughs> I be, know. That. Because they're not happy. Be, well, I'm not happy. Well, the idea is that you're not looking for the person that makes you happy. Correct. You're looking for the person that you can't live without making happy, that you try to make happy every day. You're looking for that person. And when you find that person, then you will then, then you'll be fulfilled in that. You, you'll be fulfilled in that area. But uh, it's not about them making you happy. It's about you making them about you making them happy. Yes. And when you do that, you have a great combination because both of you are now focused not on yourselves. But on, but, 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 but on, but on, on each other, and in a, like in a business situation, you just don't want business situations where you go in and you make all the money and you get all the stuff. You have to think about what can I offer this business, what can I offer this company that helps them, because ultimately that helps. Ultimately, it does help you. But if yes. you can help them, you can get what they call a symbiotic relationship um, going, and that you can have for a long time mm -hmm. as opposed to you know you go in you get one contract you make them make money and they never want to deal with you again so now you've got to repeat that hard process of getting business every single over time and over and over. Um, it's like the restaurants who you know it, or, or any businesses that that open and get your money the first time but you you're like you damn sure won't get any more of it <laughs> yeah you got me you you got you you got me this time but i won't be back thanks so much Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of, I mean, that's sort of the, the principle of, uh, of happiness. Who do you want to make happy and how happy do you want to make them? Now, will you fail sometimes? Yes. You will fall on your face sometimes, but that's not the point. The point is that you, that you are in this relationship to, to give as opposed to just get. And, and and to to add on to that about in business and stuff about your jobs and your careers, you know, a lot of people are looking for a job that's going to make them happy. Oh yeah, I need to, to to find this perfect job, this perfect job, you know. And they and you know, and once you Scam. are there and you and you think you know this is going to be the perfect job, I'm gonna it's going to make me happy, and but you don't put into it anything to to help the business you're just there every day just coming in you know clocking out you know and you don't contribute any kind of success to the business just as he was saying and you are a, a bad employee yeah you come to work on time but you're walking around the, at the the water fountain is what you call it, but in the, the break room and everything, you talking negative about your supervisor, talking negative about the, the, the VPs and negative about this and negative about that. You're always negative. So you're not, you, but you expect them to make you happy, but you are talking bad about them. How does that make sense? You are a part of that group. You are a part of that the success of that business. So you have got to contribute something to make it make you happy. Because nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Yes. And you got to have something. If, if you, you want to be, be with me. me. <laughs> 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 but that's because that, that, you know what? And that, you know, 
I, I'm glad you started there, but that's a that's a great thing that you can use. You can use everywhere, and and people do that. And you're right, people do that in their job. You know, when I worked in the in, in Hillsborough County School System for 15.1 years, how do I know point one? Because on my on my retirement paper it says point one. I'm not sure what that I'm not sure what that means, but it's point one. And and these people who had gotten these jobs and had been working in them for 20 years were the most some of the most bitter hateful, if I can say that, people, they hated their principal, they hated their department head, they hated the kids, they hated the parents, they, they hated the people downtown, because the people that downtown were the great bills above. They hated everything. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why are you still here? <laughs> why? What are you putting into this that can improve it? Yes. And this is, And it's the same thing in every relationship. What are you putting into this that improves your situation and and uh, the people always expect their managers and supervisors to to always do the part of it and then they're complaining well do you have a solution you you are the one that's unhappy so what is the solution i could never bring anything to my vp and complain about it unless i had a solution for it what what are your points and your figures what do you think can can help in this issue so don't complain and bring your stuff until you have brainstormed and you have figured out a way to help because you are a part of that team. So be a part of making the place happy. So we have so we have romantic relationships where someone goes, well, you're not making me happy. Well, you're not a ball of... <laughs> well, you, you're not a ball of joy every day either. Um, you know, and, 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 and it's like, well, that puts all the pressure on the partner mm-hmm. to somehow first figure out what that is. What from, makes you happy. From day to day. <laughs> and I don't know if anybody is happy in the same way every day, especially over a long period of time. Mm-hmm. I think that that's, that's, that's a moving target that's impossible to hit that only sets your partner up for failure and thus relationship up, 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 up for failure. So. I think for the most time that we are responsible for making ourselves happy um, by by living in situations, by understanding it, by by, by being giving, uh, taking the focus off ourselves. Um, be happy with yourself. You have to first love yourself and be happy with you in order to contribute to to making somebody else happy. You have to. Yeah, I think I think you have to, I think you have to do that first. So happiness is is, is an important is an important ingredient. Um, but there's a lot of caveats as you, as you probably already tell, there's a lot, a lot of caveats about that, um, that we want to go, that mean that we, that we went over. What's the next okay. one? Okay. The next one, compromise. It's all about give and take. And that if we were just talking about all of that in the, the happiness point, but one person can't be the only one giving and giving and doing everything when you have a partnership. You can't depend on that one person to 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 uh, give you love, to give you money, to give you this and give you all. Everything is being done by one person and nobody's giving that person anything. You It wears out that one person in the relationship. Yeah, I mean, any, anything that becomes one-sided in that sense um, is not, really ready. I mean, it, it's not going to last. Like we talked about all the business relationship, everything that's one-sided, it, you know, the answer that's one-sided isn't going to last. Um, so what you need to do is, is, is make sure to the best of your ability that your idea of your participation in, in, in a relationship, no matter what it is, is what you can offer. And then offer what you, and then offer what you can offer. Not everybody's going to have everything all the time. Not everyone's going to be able to do everything or even know what to, uh, frankly, even know what to do. But offer what you can in any relationship because that's really important. What can you, uh, what can you offer? Is it time? Is it your, your talents, ability? Uh, what is it that you can offer in any, in, in any relationship? That's what you have to do. It's um, a give and take your, thing. Your, your attention and, well, you know what? I'm, I'm thinking more it's a give thing. 
Yeah. It's a give, the give more thing. you give, it's a give, give thing. Uh, just give. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and not just expect that the other person or the other entity will just give because um, you took a breath this morning. Um, the idea is that you have to concentrate on the, on, on the giving side. And I think if, if, if every entity in a relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship, a marriage relationship, um, a business work relationship. A work relationship, business relationship. Think about what you can offer. What are you? What are you offering? Like Debbie said before, you go to work every day. Yeah, you, you show up. You show up on time, but you, but you only show up on time. So that's one less thing they can fire you about. Mm-hmm. But anything else, anything past that, they actually probably can't would <laughs> like you to be late. Some so they can fire you because because you're a because you're a miserable so and so. Um, <laughs> You know, any anything extra at five oh one, your car you're already in the parking lot and your car is mm-hmm. screeching out of the parking lot at five oh one. You can't even give the job five minutes. Five minutes. You can't offer that. As a yes, and sometimes frankly as a gift. Yes, this is worth it. This is worth it enough to me to stay another five minutes or ten minutes to finish this up. So that my work is up to par. And that way somebody else doesn't have to do it. Because I care about my coworkers, I care about my managers, I care about the entity, I care about my customers or my members or whatever. So I'm going to, I'm, yes, I'm going to sacrifice another a ten minutes from my life to make sure that this is handled. No, I ain't getting paid for this. I'm out to do. Out to do. Ding, ding, ding. That you know that that that, that five o'clock horn goes off, and you are breaking. <laughs> so, and then have the and those people have the nerve when they get in a tight to think that the entity or the business or their coworkers are going to give to them, mm-hmm. help them out when they're getting a tight. Hey man, can you go in for me tomorrow? Uh, I know can it's your you day off. Can you switch with me? But you know, but I got, cause I got this thing. Did you switch with them last time when they had that thing? Did you help them out when they had that? Did you give? And now you're mad because it was like, no, I can't do it, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't do it. Now you're mad. And this is, and this is, and 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 and, and that's kind of a a workplace scenario. But this that goes everywhere. That scenario happens in every household, almost every day, at some level. What can you give? What can you do? Um, and that's really, really important. And that's part of the give, give, give. Give what you can. Contribute to the household. Contribute however, however to the you job. Can. How, however you can, try to contribute. Compromise. Uh, the next one is safety. Um, if you don't feel safe in a relationship, then you probably shouldn't be in that relationship. Um, safety, you know, uh, we talk, we've talked about abuse within a marriage and, um, you know, some every every day there's some some male or woman, or, or man or woman waking up and within fear of that they're gonna get beat up or you know by somebody in their household. So you know, not just the unsafety feeling of a stranger, you know, coming in and hurting them or the uh, unsafety features at, at work or anything like that, but their own personal family member is that, you know, harming them. Yeah. We did talk about, um, we did talk about spousal abuse. Um, and you can check out the video where, where do they go? They go up here, I think. Yeah. Yes. Up there. Um, the little eye and you can, um, and you, and you'll see in the, you know, what in the end videos, the video I did about my own personal upbringing, um, that it is, it, it it is really an important thing that your uh, that your partner your spouse feel feel safe, especially physically safe. Mm-hmm. And that, I mean, there is nothing like living in a horror movie because it's like living in a horror movie. It's like because you do, you, you just never know when you get that gotcha around the corner, and then everybody jumps. You know, you know in, in, in those kind of movies, to, to live like that every day. Um, 24 seven is debilitating really. And it's debilitating every, every, in, in, in every aspect of your life. Um, so yes, people need to feel safe in their space um, for sure. And that 
and and then that doesn't just go with the physical. Um, it can be mental or or financially. I mean, if you don't feel safe that you you're gonna have your home. Are you going to be able to have your car? Are you peeping out the window wondering if they're picking up your car? You know, parking, that's... Parking your car down the street or in, or in the backyard. Yes. that Those kind of unsafe... If, if you can't have a secure relationship in in with your marriage in that manner, you know, people, people leave people because they don't feel safe. They don't feel like they're secure for the rest of their lives. Yeah, and that's it, it. It's a re- it's a really big thing. That, I mean, that, that 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 sort of living on the edge all the time is first of all is exhausting, and it ages you. Absolutely exhausting, and um, all and and it makes it almost impossible to enjoy or participate in any of the things that we've mentioned up uh, up until this point, because it's always that big axe over your axe, not ask you, but axe, the chop thing over your head all the time. And it's, and it's debilitating and it's, and it's exhausting. So, so, so as much as you can, try to, to try to provide an environment where at least you feel, you feel safe and you feel somewhat secure in that environment uh, because that's really very, very important. And that goes for work. Also, if you don't feel safe on your job, you know, um, working in an environment where you feel like and and nowadays that can happen anywhere. You heard heard last week where these people working just in a, a, a newspaper and somebody comes in and shoots them up and kills five of them in the newspaper business. I mean, you it the, the world that we live in now is serious it's something else ain't it it's so else. you know that your work environment needs to be feel you need to feel safe there now also but you know uh, you could be sitting there and and just doing your regular job uh, on the computer and somebody comes in and does the so you know it's about when you're not talking about police officers where they're going out and they uh they don't know if they're going to come home. Or, or firefighters, when everybody's running away from the burning building, they're, going they're running. In. They're running to the burning building. That's that's a different kind of cat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, I'm glad they're around, but that's a different kind of cat. Um, but you know, we, we were talking about being about, about feel about being safe and doing and making sure that the you know the business is doing all they can because you can only do so much really mm-hmm. um, to make people feel secure. Because the the physical aspect of that about you know people coming in and shooting up and up, but also if the business that you're working for is financially Struggling. unstable, and that you feel you could feel that way um, about that business, you know, have feel unsafe because you don't know if you're going to have a job next week. Yeah. A lot of people go through that now. You know, you 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 hear on the news that your company is is in trouble and you are like i didn't know that you know if you if you're jeffrey the giraffe suddenly <laughs> yeah they're handing you did you see my post jeffrey they're, they're handing you your walking papers and you're like and your little briefcase what happened what happened i was out talking to the kids and i come back and everybody and all everything was gone <laughs> you know <laughs> poor poor jeffrey poor jeffrey well i think that maybe jeffrey will get on with zoo tampa I think, bush gardens. A bush gardens. Well, you know, one of those things. I, I think, I, I think he's going to be okay. I think, I think he'll, he'll land on his feet. I hope Jeffrey had a good retirement plan. Keep your head up, <laughs> Jeffrey. Keep your head up, way up. <laughs> keep your head up. You're going to be good. Uh, yeah. So what else we got? Okay, independence. Independence. Important to feel dun, like, dun, to, dun, to dun, have dun, your dun, own dun. personal time. You know, we talk about being together and doing things and all this stuff, but it, in a relationship, you don't want to feel smothered, you know, always up under you. Like liver. <laughs> smothered <laughs> or chicken. Uh, <laughs> eat. I'll eat both right now. I know it's early, but I can, I, I, I can go for some smothered liver right now. But you At don't 9:30. want to. <laughs> My breath will be like, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Leftover liver is good. Mm, I don't know about nine thirty. 
<laughs> on a Monday. <laughs> I don't know. That's the best idea. Yeah, but 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 independent. You know, being able to be independent is is important because you're not going to be together all the time. Um, because that's not how life goes. You don't get to walk around tied together all the time. Um, so both partners have to be strong enough to be alone or, or, or not alone, have but, their own but have their own thing. Because again, without that, and it goes back to where we started, without that, you've got nothing to give. Mm-hmm. It's important to have your, your own time with, with God you know, you to sit and, 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 and communicate with God and so that you can have something within you to give back to the relationship. It's important to have your time of exercise and, and to stay healthy so that you can give to the relationship. You know, you got to keep that emotional, spiritual, physical, everything about yourself um, on top so that you can be a part of the relationship when it's time to 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 be together. Yeah, I mean it's 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 like it's like it's like any it's like hey Sheila, hey Terry. It's like it's like anything else. You have to make sure that you are ready to perform in the relationship. Um, and in order to do that, you 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 you've got to be independent in the sense um, we are inner and we are interdependent, but we're not codependent. Mm-hmm. Um, not everything we do depends on the other person that's that's codependent that means and then codependency you can't move you can't do anything without the other person and that's not a really strong place to be because sometimes the other person's not available four years ago four and a half years ago i you know what in january i wasn't i wasn't available mm-hmm. i wasn't available good morning sheila and so had my wife not had this history of independence, being able to take care of herself uh, as well as take care of the rest of us, um, if, it, if it was all going to be on me, it was going to be problematical because I was simply not available, especially for three days while I was asleep. And then the 18 days in the hospital, I simply was not available. And then the, the, the recovery, it was probably this time in 14, I was able to get back to vo- full voice even. I was talking like this a lot because to take a deep breath hurt, frankly. Mm-hmm. And there was no laughing because laughing was like, ah, no. And sneezing was the worst ever. When you have heart surgery, a, a quick aside, when you have heart surgery, they give you this heart pillow now when you cough. But no one ever tells you about that when you sneeze, your eyes are going to bug out of your head. <laughs> they never tell you. And I think they, t- they don't tell you for, on purpose because they don't want you to know. They just don't want you to know. Uh, so when, cause when it happens the first time, you know, you go, oh, my God, I can never sneeze again. So, but it, had Deb not been an independent person to start with, it would have been, it, it would have been, it was bad enough, but it, it, it would have been worse. So sometimes you've got to be the person who is built up already by yourself mm-hmm. to have something. To be strong enough. To, to have something when the relationship needs something. But it needs that person or that entity to be the one that can pull, that that can keep pulling, even if they have to pull by themselves for a little bit. Mm-hmm. So yes, independence or, or 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 learning learning to be independent is extremely important. Now I know a lot of the Hallmark movies want everybody to be all the time. <laughs> and they, you know what? And they work in a little shop all by themselves. Christmas in July. Christmas in July. It is Christmas in July, y'all. <laughs> Hallmark. No, and we're not, and, and we're not making a nickel from, <laughs> from Hallmark. Hallmark. Not a, not a, not a nickel. Not a penny. Not a red cent. So there'll be no links to Hallmark movies up there. <laughs> no, there won't be. Uh, but it is Christmas in July. So I, I see a lot of. Looking forward to it. I like the one about Santa Claus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite one about she meets this guy and then he and and his dad is Santa. Claus. And, yeah, and, and he, they always talk about the family business, and his dad is Santa. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. Yes, and they have a they have a reindeer. And his name is his name is Rudolph. Rudy. <laughs> his name is Rudy. It's awesome. <laughs> That's the best one. All right, so what else you got? No, let's ring it all back here because we're running out of <laughs> running out of we're running out, we're running out of battery here. And running out of that, and we did on the. Uh, now, I thought about this because I knew it was happening. I'm going to do this. 
you Facebook folks won't mind. Won't mind. And you YouTube people aren't going to mind either because that makes my life a lot easier. Just just doing that makes my life a lot easier. Okay, well, but it's important to be independent of your 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 spouse, your coworkers. You know, you got to be able to work at work on your own. So it's important that you learn and keep your your knowledge up and everything because not so nobody's going to be there because there are a lot of times when I work late at night or on the weekends when it's just me pushing out what I do and you don't have that person there to to uh, turn around and ask what do you think about this and what do you think about that and what you how do you do to, how do you do that again yes so it's important to study and know your job and so that you are able to work on your own because you don't want to be calling somebody and and bugging their them at home because you didn't pay attention in the meeting <laughs> yeah you know one of the things they don't teach you when you go to college about teaching is that when once you once you close the door, you are on your own. Once you're in there with the with the little creatures, you close that door. It's all about poof, you. It's on you. All of it. All of it's on all of it's on you. Whatever happens in that classroom is on you. Now well, you may end up like um like that dog in Gremlins tied tied up in the Christmas lights. Uh <laughs> that is one of my favorite scenes. But it's all on you. So you have to build that independence. You have to, mm -hmm. and, and, and Debbie's, and Debbie's right, you have, to, you have to study, you have to work, you have to, you know what, you have to practice, you have to do all these things. That way, when the, the time comes, you have something to give. Because if you don't do that, you won't have anything to give. And if you have nothing to give, um, there's little chance that any relationship is going to be successful. Being independent. Be independent. That's important. Um, partnership. Have that person's back. And we all constantly we talk, talk about, about all that time. all the time. Remember, this is a partnership. You, 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 there's not no anyone in that relationship that is better or higher level than the other. So wives, you know, don't talk bad about your husbands. I can't say that too many times. Don't talk about because that is you. You're talking about you <laughs> when you talk bad about your your partner. The same goes with work. You know, be cautious about, you know, speaking bad about your coworkers and stuff like that. If you work for a company, you all are the company. It's no back office, front office, whatever like that. You don't you don't put down another area because they they are a part of the business and you're all one. So you need to to figure it out. If you're looking at, and well, and that only frankly, that only works if you're looking to be successful. Yeah. If you don't care about being successful, then go ahead and and flame flame your own business, burn down your own house because that's what you're doing. When in a marriage relationship, if you spend a lot of time outside of your marriage talking bad about your wife, talking bad about, well, she doesn't do this and she can't do this and and blah, 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 blah. You spend a lot of time doing that. What you're doing is burning down your own house. Now, that makes you crazy. Yes. I mean, it, it, just, it just makes, other than making, it making you stupid, it, it just makes you crazy that you, would, that you would go outside of your house and cover your house with kerosene and set it on fire. Why would you, why would you do that? If you're trying to build something and have something long term, the last thing you need to do is burn down your home. Oh, you I mean your your own home? And what I and when I automatically think when I hear people do that, I always go doesn't say much about you. You picked her. You picked them. <laughs> you picked her. Doesn't say much about you. And that's what Debbie was saying. You know what? That's you. That was your choice. Mm -hmm. You know what? No one tied you down. And and you know you know what? And I'm guessing you probably most people don't have shotgun weddings anymore. So that that's not what happened. You picked them. So, <laughs> thanks, Laura. Laura's white. Hi, I'm watching you too. Um, so you picked them. So there. So your complaints. You're complaining about you and your lack of good judgment. <laughs> so yes. yeah. So, so be cautious. Stop complaining about, about your spouse, your partner, in public. Stop. Just. I got an idea. Just don't do it. It's like the opposite of Nike. Just don't do it. Mm -hmm. 
And, and, and the more you practice not doing it, the easier it'll be to not not do it. Just don't do it. Just don't. Because, again, it says, it says a lot about you, too. It says an awful lot. It says more about you than it actually says about your partner. So just don't do it. And if you have a true friend that you could value and trust, it goes the same way with the friendship mm -hmm. relationship. Don't go and talk to somebody else about your friend, you know, if that friend, if you come into a room and they're talking about your friend, you Defend know, your friend, if you're a friend and, 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 and then you don't have to run back to your friend and say, Oh yeah, they were talking about you, but I had your back. You don't have to do that. And that's something else in friend relationship that, 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 that I know um, works. That's how you keep friends. Hey, Duan. Uh -huh. um, that's how you, that's how you keep good friends. That's how you know you have good friends. People who will defend you when you're not there and never run and tell you about it because they don't have because they don't have to. They don't feel they need to. Um, and a lot of times you'll hear about it. You go, well, you know what? So and so is a friend of yours. Yeah. Hey, they had nothing but good things to say about you. I appreciate mm -hmm. that because um, that's how you know. Um, that's how you keep good. That's how you get good friends. And that's how you keep good friends. Um, have their back. Defend them. Now, if I don't know how many young, young people this, uh, watch this program, I know it's summertime, maybe some of y'all will stumble in, stumble out. But um, that, ha you know what, if you can see that sort of thing happening early on in, 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 in you know, what in friendship, like in high school, mm -hmm. um, where you go to a group of people and they're talking bad about your friend, the, the initial reaction is, well, you don't say nothing because you don't want to get in a fight with anybody. But 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 the kids who but I and I, I've seen this personally. If you, the kids who stand up for their friends are the best friends. Those are your best friends. Your best friends aren't the people that you've known the longest. No. Your best friends are the people who will stand up for you when you're not there. Mm -hmm. Those are your best friends. And people talk about marriages. Well, I married my best friend without even knowing what that means. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you just married somebody who who wasn't repulsed by seeing you naked. <laughs> And go, Ugh. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Are you getting treatment for that? Uh, so, so that's where that's where I'm sorry. That's where most of y'all were. Uh, you just married somebody who wasn't repulsed by seeing you naked. Um, that, a best friend is, is is a completely different thing. I think that you grow in the best friendhood yes. ship. We weren't best friends, but we were friends. We're friends. And um, we've known each other for we've a known while, each other for a while, and grew into a relationship. And that's how it happens. Is that, is that all 10? That's 10. All right, I think we need to recap those 10. Let's start from uh, part one. Part one trust, trust, honesty, honesty, respect. R E S P E C T. No, I don't have a song for all of these. I wish I did. How cool would that be? <laughs> <laughs> Communication, <laughs> loyalty, happiness, compromise, safety, independence, safety and dollars. partnership. There you go. Those are the, those are, those are, are are ten of the of, of the most important ingredients in having a relationship. A, a, a relationship, not just a marriage relationship, a friend relationship, a business relationship, uh, an employee employee uh, relationship. That's where you want to be. All right, we got to get out of here and make room for somebody else because there's stuff to do today. Thank you ever so much. Please remember to go to our YouTube channel and, and like and subscribe and share with your friends. If you like what we do, if, if we're offering any value um, to your life, please go there and um, subscribe. Uh, we need 16 more subscribers to get to 50. Uh, we should be able to do that. That shouldn't be any big, that shouldn't be any big problem, but we need, to, we, we need to do that because we need to get to 100. Mm -hmm. um, that way we can have a, a, a and, 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 and it's not that we are looking for this notoriety. Let me quickly, quickly, quickly explain to you. Um, if we get to 100 subscribers, we can have a, hey, Stanley, uh, a YouTube um, channel name that's a lot easier to share. Yes. It doesn't, um, Sheila, uh, I will, we'll give, we'll give that I'll you. put this link, I'll put that, thank you so much, I'll put that link in um after we get done if you go to youtube and you search for real talk with deb and will you'll find it or just 
Deborah Lawson. There you go. And um, subscribe to that channel. That allows us to have a, a regular link. Now, because the link now is this weird thousand characters that don't make any sense. And that just allows us to share easier. And we appreciate yes. that. And, that. and that's all. And, and not that at, at 100, uh, we start making any money. Um, <laughs> because that's not true either. Because you don't see what she says goes. <laughs> I like that, Stanley. <laughs> All right, Stanley, I will deal with you on Thursday. Um, I might have something for you Thursday. You yeah, yeah, you I have some, a cake or something. Yeah, I'm, I, I got, I got something for you. It won't be a cake. Okay. Oh, we gotta get out of here. So until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness' sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We will see you when we see you. Peace. <laughs> We are out. Love you guys. <laughs> Why doesn't this work? There it is. Blink.